So thank you to I'm No Clue. You kind of sent me down another <laughs> stupid rabbit hole of this lady's book and the things she was saying. Um, so I made this video, right? And I don't know if I want to go back and edit it because she was saying that cyanobacteria is like good for you and stuff. And it, it kind of just, I just kind of let it slip. Like, I don't know. What I've learned over all this time is that every single thing a vegan says, you got to research it, even if they tell you one plus one equals two. Because I kind of just let that one slide, <laughs> even though I think I know a little bit better because I've warned y'all on my channel about not buying cheap blue green algae supplements, not buying cheap spirulina supplements, not buying cheap chlorella supplements. Why is that? Because the cyanobacteria and stuff that some of these things are full of toxins. You got to buy it from like a pure pristine source. But anyway, this person wrote, she's super dumb on cyanobacteria cyanotoxins are potent toxic compounds produced by certain types of cyanobacteria also known as blue green algae they're a major public and animal health concern especially during harmful algal blooms they're un not unicorn dust okay so i was like why why is she even talking about cyanobacteria actually <laughs> i want you to follow me here because following the vegan brain is very it's it's <laughs> it's mind-blowingly stupid so she acknowledges that they're using rhizobium to make b12 in the lab or to make cobalamin we'll just call it cobalamin for simplicity's sake now the one that she focuses heavily 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 on in this book for some reason is cyanocobalamin because she wants to keep using the word cyanide 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 but she acknowledges that they use this rhizobium bacteria to make the cobalamin right that she says doesn't exist in nature but then she says these rhizobium, they're found in the roots, they found in the soil on the roots of legume plants, right? Which is true. You can easily search that. But in the title of this chapter, it says cyanobacteria. I'm like, how do we even get onto talking about cyanobacteria? As far as I know, that has nothing to do with making B12 that humans need, the form that we need, and not using a lab to make the synthetic version either. So I'm like, how do we get onto this? She said, it must also be noted that these rhizobium are referred to as cyanobacteria. I don't know where she pulled this from. I don't know because it's not true. All you have to do is get on Google. Now, the thing about this is that she doesn't give any reference to where this came from, but she said it must be noted that these rhizobium are referred to as cyanobacteria and the main supplement form sold as B12 is called cyanocobalamin. And you can see how she italicized the cyano. See, they both have cyano. Rhizobium are not referred to as cyanobacteria, miss. You made, you literally made that up. I would say that this is probably one of the biggest lies in her book because you can easily get on Google and see no, rhizobium are not referred to as cyanobacteria. They are two different types of bacteria with distinct characteristics and functions. Rhizobium is a genus of bacteria that forms a symbiotic relationship with legumes, helping fix nitrogen, right? Because she said that in her book, the one thing she probably said that was true, the rhizobium bacteria is found on the roots of the legume plants. But it has nothing to do with cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria, on the other hand, are photosynthetic bacteria that can live freely in soil or water and form other symbiotic relationships. So they are not the same thing. They're not. Rhizobium are not cyanobacteria. Where does she get that from? Where does she pull that from? Did she just want to italicize cyano? I don't know. There was literally no need to do that because the rhizobium is the bacteria that's used in the lab and in the cow's rumen to make B12 apparently why did cyanobacteria get brought into the discussion at all whatsoever they're not referred to as a cyanobacteria you made that up and i do think that vegans in denial like miss jeanette here will say well, we're all bacteria and they're probably you know pretty similar and it don't really matter the categorization i looked at pictures of both of them and i can see why they're categorized different and why they're not all just you know lumped together as one type of bacteria because they look completely different okay this is what rhizobium looks like under a microscope the color, the way that it's organized is completely different than when you look up what cyanobacteria looks like. This is what rhizobium looks like. Okay, you see the color, you see the way it's structured. That's what rhizobium looks like. And you may think, oh, cyanobacteria is going to be pretty much the same, maybe a slightly more green color. No, no, it looks, it looks completely different. And I can see why scientifically they are not the same. They are not even remotely the same. Okay, so just get it into your mind. This is what the rhizobia looks like. Are you ready to see what the cyanobacteria looks like? Where she said the rhizobium is considered to be a cyanobacteria. It looks completely different, y'all. Look, look. That's a whole different thing. She said the rhizobium was considered to be a cyanobacteria. There ain't no way any scientist with eyes would consider those to both be the same thing. That would be highly confusing. This is completely different. It's organized different. It's got a distinct color. Look at how it's all lined up. They're not even <laughs> remotely similar. So 
yeah, uh, she's not going to answer the question about the cat. Um, where you feed your cat? And also, why did you say that rhizobium is considered to be a cyanobacteria when it's clearly not? Where did you get that from? Where did you pull that from? Oh, well, I saw cyano, 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 cyano. See, everything cyano, cyano. <laughs> you know, there's health issues that start with cyano. It means someone's skin is turning blue. I already talked about that in my other video. Cyan means blue. Why did you say that was categorized as a type of cyanobacteria? Why did you do that? We need to know. <laughs> and then she wrote, she had the audacity to write the prefix cyano, I already read this in my other videos, in cyanocobalamin was specifically chosen in order to give the illusion that it was of the same natural molecular structure as cyanobacteria. Ma'am, they were using a soil bacteria, not a cyanobacteria. You made, you literally made all of this up, miss. What in the world? Oh, they cho called it cyano because they wanted to mimic cyanobacteria. That, that was all your own hallucination. No one brought cyanobacteria into the discussion until you did. They were using rhizobium, which is a soil bacteria. Has nothing to do with cyanobacteria. You're the one that made up the lie that it was a cyanobacteria. And now you're going to make up some conspiracy about how they called it that. Because it went, she, first of all, she can't even decide whether the B12 is a bacteria or whether it's a product of the bacteria she can't make up her mind but Mr. Vegan she's probably gonna be upset by this video like just just open up your mind I opened up my mind I opened up my eyeballs too and looked at the pictures of the bacteria <laughs> it's not a cyanobacteria grow up y'all grow up get out of your conspiracy theorist mindset if you don't want to take B12 okay but tell us what you feed your cat and tell us why you called rhizobium a cyanobacteria